The first production A-10 Warthog was delivered to Davis Monthan Air Force Base, Ares in October 1975. Specifically designed for close air support, its combination of large and varied ordnance load, long loiter time, accurate weapons delivery, austere field capability, and survivability has proven invaluable to the United States and its allies. The aircraft has participated in operations Desert Storm, Southern Watch, Provide Comfort, Desert Fox, Noble Anvil, Deny Flight, Deliberate Guard, Allied Force, Enduring Freedom, Iraqi Freedom and Operation Inherent Resolve. The Warthog can employ a wide variety of conventional munitions, including general-purpose bombs, cluster bomb units, laser-guided bombs, joint direct attack munitions or JDAM, wind-corrected munitions dispenser or WCMD, AGM-65 Maverick and AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles, rockets, illumination flares, and the GAU-8 Avenger 30mm cannon, capable of firing 3,900 rounds per minute to defeat a wide variety of targets including tanks. GAU-8 Avenger 30mm cannon. The contracted specifications directed the gun be capable of destroying a wide variety of targets expected to be encountered during a close air support mission. Light, medium and heavy tanks, armored personnel carriers, and fixed or mobile artillery. The specifications also called for the Avenger to be capable of destroying hardened targets like bunkers and equipment within revetments. Something almost nobody knows is that because of the GAU-8, the A-10 has a window wash system. A-10 pilot at U.S. Air Force says, when we would fire the GAU-8 cannon on the hog, it would produce prodigious amounts of burnt gunpowder residue. So much so that the front window would, after a few gun runs, become noticeably dirty, hazy because of the sheer amount of gunsmoke residue. The A-10 was a brilliantly designed aircraft, simply push a button in the cockpit and window wash fluid would be dispensed from nozzles at the base of the front windscreen allowing the slipstream to carry it up and wash the residue away. Something else not generally known is that when the gun is fired, the igniters in the engines will also engage so long as the trigger is held and for 10 seconds afterwards, this helps to keep the motors running in case they ingest a large amount of smoke residue during the gun run. Should the gun gas ingestion cause a momentary flame out, the igniters provide the spark to keep the flame lit until the 1970. The Air Force issued a request for proposal for a 30mm rapid-fire cannon to use in the AX close air support aircraft. In June of 1971 General Electric and Philco Ford were selected to build the prototype gun, designated GAU-8. Besides development of the gun, the contract called for the development of four types of ammunition, armor-piercing incendiary, high-explosive incendiary, semi-armor-piercing high-explosive and target practice. And there was uranium-depleted bullets used some time ago, but according to the statement given there will not be used anymore, but why there were used at the first place. First deployed on a large scale during the Gulf War, the U.S. military used depleted uranium for tank armor bullets due to its high density, helping it to penetrate enemy armored vehicles. The GAU-8 wasn't ready for the AX fly-off competition between the Northrop A-9A and the Republic A-10A, so the General Electric M61A-1, Vulcan, 20mm cannon was installed for initial weapons testing of the two aircraft. The first in-flight testing of the GAU-8 was done on February 26, 1974. The gun was fired for the first time in flight with combat ammunition on June 19, 1974. The Avenger fired more than 39,000 rounds of ammunition during approximately 60 test flights. The gun was tested in a wide variety of flight profiles, from as high as 25,000 feet to as low as 100 feet, at speeds ranging from 135 knots to 415 knots, in all attitudes with up to 5 Gs. The test program went smoothly and the Avenger was installed in all production A-10s and retrofitted to both YA-10s replaced the Vulcan cannon originally installed. Now, since the GAU-8 was conceived 50 years ago and if the A-10 can't destroy modern tanks, could it, or a successor, be upgraded with an even bigger cannon? First of all, let's take a look at the assumption that an A-10 can't destroy modern tanks, Lynn Taylor, A-10 pilot, says on Quora. As pretty much everyone else answering this question has pointed out, 
the A-10 can fairly easily destroy a tank. As can anything else slinging either an AGM-65 Maverick or an AGM-114 Hellfire. Some other aircraft that can destroy a modern tank, include the following, MQ-1 Predator, AH-6 Little Bird, even a Cessna 208 Caravan. A freaking Cessna, can kill a tank, people. It's really not that hard, given the right tool for the job. Taylor continues. Okay, so, maybe what the questioner means to ask is, if the A-10 can't kill a modern tank with its gun, can we just put a bigger gun on it? That question is a little more valid. A little, because there is a bit of mystery about the relative capabilities of both modern tanks and the awesomeness that is the GAU-8 Avenger cannon. Rather than repeat an analysis of the Avenger's tank killing capability, I'll simply point you here. Can an A-10 Warthog airplane take down an advanced Russian tank, like AT-90, with its Gatling gun alone? The super short version is, the gun can still put a hurting on a modern tank. While the hog has never wanted to try to perforate a treaded tin can from the front, those things are still reliably squishy when you come at it from the right angle. That, right angle, tends to be the top and the rear. Can you squeeze a bigger gun in the A-10? I mean, theoretically, yes. Engineers are modern magicians, and if you had to figure out a way to mount, say, a 40mm rotary cannon on the existing airframe, I'm sure they could figure out some crazy way to do it. But for all practical purposes. No. The plane was designed around the gun as a popular statement, but it is not a joke. In order to put something even bigger on the plane, you'd need to consider several factors, including, space requirements. It's already a tight fit. You'd have to decide what to get rid of, or have parts hanging out in the airstream. Or both. Weight and balance you'd be adding a lot more weight to the front end of the jet. That would have to be offset somewhere else. Thrust. Don't even get me started on the fact that the A-10 is really a single-engine airplane, with half an engine on each side. Vibration. Holy hand grenades of Antioch. The hog already shakes like it's going to come apart when the gun kicks off. I can only imagine what it'd be like with something bigger. So, all of that just to get a, likely, unnecessary boost in capability. What about on a successor aircraft? Sure, you could design that in, but I'm not sure it would be worth it. I'm trying to think of a target that a 30mm can't deal with, but a larger round could, that you wouldn't just sling a missile at, anyway. Our next story about A-10 Warthog is going to be the famous A-10 pilot's story in which he landed without landing gear after a hard dog fight, so you should subscribe and turn the notification on, so you wouldn't miss the story, thank you guys for watching, hope you liked it.